direction. You can do it by hand if you want to push a little through the line, or you can let the locomotive do it as it rolls. Um, problem is, they're all full of crap. So every one of them had to come off and be, be cleaned out, or in many cases, replaced. They go to a distribution box. This distribution box is really a thing of joy. It mechanically subdivides the incoming stream of oil into four little spurts and sends it on its way in four different directions to things that need to be oiled. And if you take one apart and you run some air through it from behind, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to watch. It doesn't go nearly that fast in service. It's a very slow station ball. But these distribution boxes all had to be rebuilt. They can't go get one at the Napa locomotive parts store. They don't exist. And then the copper that plums this, it looked like stuff on your air conditioner. It's not. It's got this little tiny hole in a really thick wall, and there's only one place in the world that makes it, and sells it, and they're in London. And they sell it in 4,000 millimeter sticks, 13 feet. So what you do is you have them cut the sticks in half before they ship it. It costs less if you can get it in a conventional container. And we were going to cut it anyway. And it goes everywhere underneath the locomotive. But you put five gallons of oil in it, you're good for 1,500 or more miles without having to oil around. The valve gearing on the side had uh, a special kind of roller bearing, which is no longer made. So we yeah, and we I think it just straightened itself out. With the grass that's uh, like, uh, yep. grass. And getting these things into place, Matt, we built more bearing pushes. Yeah. It got just a teeny bit cocked and then straightened itself out. It just got no, no room to screw it. It may have to adjust it, I don't know. So I learned a lot about getting the grass to put in place on balcony. I mean, really? And now all those bushings allow you to push this rod back and forth the pneumatic with automated system. This thing is called a lifting link, and what it does basically is cycle the transmission. The locomotive will run in forward or in reverse, and it, it has the equivalent of what you can think of as a continuously variable automatic transmission, so that as you accelerate, you can choose to use less steam injected at the beginning of the stroke, stop injecting and let it expand for the balance of the stroke, save money for the company, use less steam. Or you can just crank the thing wide open and, and inject steam continuously. But we, we've got all that working. Electricity. They didn't have much. They had a little steam dynamo. We now are going to run two. They're only $16,000 a piece if you can find them. And they've been rewound by a local company for us uh, so that they actually work. 32 volts, 500 watts DC. That's all you do. You run steam through them, put the thread there. And yet, just enough to turn on a few lights. They had gauges in the cab that were illuminated. They have a, a headlamp, which is really meek and, and mild. I mean, the headlamp isn't so the engineers can see where they're going. They can't see where they're going. It's so you can see them coming and get off the track. The bell, the headlamp, and the whistle are all instructions for you to get off the track. Oh, speaking of track, <laughs> well, we didn't have the best track in Albuquerque. As a matter of fact, the ties were rotting. The locomotive was going to go on the ground. We got some help from a donor. See, 1937 is the date nail that came out of that stuff. It had been there for a while, and it wasn't well laid to begin with. So we, we did the whole thing here with the commercial company that, that uh, dug us out, uh, did the, the civil engineering thing with the, the geogrid and the right kind of fill, and compacted it, and started relaying the rail on new ties. And it got to the point where they realized they just didn't know how to do this. So they had to call in a group locally here called Gandy Dancer. Uh, Gandy Dancer is actually fun to watch work. They're fueled by ice water and cigarettes, nothing else. <laughs> and they, work, they work from the moment the sun comes up until it's too dark to see what they're doing. Uh, the, jack, the track has to be jacked to an exact level and surveyed so that you've got a good, clean run of track. And then, they, once the track's where it's supposed to be, it has to be packed down with these guys double jack where you two guys come in here but they do that mostly to show off uh, a pneumatic or I'm not a hydraulic hammer so I'm going to get better way to get those down and then 
to get the ballast where it belongs. The ballast is a lot of rock. It's got a lot of rough edges. It's got a lot of gripping and grabbing surface. And the thing and these fingers are shoved down into the ballast and vibrated pneumatically to basically shake all the rock to so find its final sound position, all while the, drag, the track is held in exact position by jacks. And when that's done, you have a wonderful track. We have a uh, track that will last when I'm dead and gone. It'll still be there. Okay, we're now cycling back to those superheater fluids. Somebody's doing a little calculation on the table of what, what this is going to come out to. And it turns out that the three and a half inches only weigh 94 pounds a piece once they're trimmed to size. So there's going to be a lot of steel in The blue tubes um, are easy because you can put them anywhere you want them. It's a three and a half inch hole, you put, a three, put them in a three and a half inch hole. They've got to be trimmed to the perfect size first. So you have to build a jig so that you saw is going to cut them at exactly the right length uh, prior to installing them. It's a bitch to cut these things off once they're installed. It's actually a bitch to get them in there, which is, this is a team building. Is there any team, or a team building kind of company somewhere? This is team. For a bunch of old men, I'm not happy. So you build a temporary work deck in front of the locomotive, so you can force these things up onto it, and then into the boiler they go. Well, into the boiler they go. Everybody wondering what the hell's happening to them inside there? The good, the good part is, the good part, that's an electrical engineer carrying the boiler. Easy enough. 
uh, once those beaded rims are done, then you clean them up and then 